and Kinsey, on to our favourite topic, the Royals. And the commentary on the Not Royal Royal Tour in Kenya continues. But this time it's Nigeria's first lady who offered her view on the Sussexes visit. What was her particular criticism? Yeah, this has really set the internet ablaze. Um, she said, tell young girls and women we don't accept nakedness in our culture. That is not beautiful. She also stressed they do not want to mimic and try to emulate film stars from America. They don't know where they come from. Why did Megan come here looking for Africa? Whether there was resentment towards Megan there, I'm not sure. I don't have an opinion on that. But I do think it's an odd coincidence considering the fact that Megan was criticized for her wardrobe being culturally inappropriate throughout that trip. And I mean, friendly reminder, Meghan Markle is a Hollywood actress. So, it, it you know, it's a, it's a very odd coincidence. Absolutely. And another story which just won't go away is the Prince Harry visa saga. The information still hasn't been publicly released and it appears the kid gloves are out for the prince. What's the latest? Well, I mean, it's, again, the Biden administration protecting Prince Harry. Uh, the Telegraph headline read, Biden administration pleads with court to keep Prince Harry's visa documents under wraps. This is found inside a 53-page transcript from a court hearing all the way back in February. And um, again, this is the Heritage Foundation saying, the American public just wants to know the truth. How is Prince Harry here? Did he lie on his visa application or was he given special privilege? The Biden administration fighting and their, their new... I guess their new argument is this. Many of these records are law enforcement records. They believe there is a stigma associated with being mentioned in law enforcement records. And they argue that publishing those files would expose confidential law enforcement tools. The government insists, you know, even Prince Harry deserves some form of privacy. That's very interesting considering that uh, the stigma doesn't seem to be an issue when it comes to other people because we know the rules uh, for everyone else. So it's very interesting that this here is, seems to be the principal argument uh, in this case and, and insofar as Prince Harry is concerned. Now, we've seen a continued and, and stunning lack of self-awareness out of the Sussexes, but apparently now Harry's reportedly frustrated that the royal family won't acknowledge his achievements. Now, I'm not quite sure where to begin with uh, on this, Kinsey. The entitlement is thick and fast here, isn't it? I totally agree with you, but I don't necessarily know if I believe this. I don't consider Prince Harry the most intelligent person in the world, but I give him more credit than to believe he was sitting around expecting a high five from the royal family after calling a room full of Nigerian scammers his in-laws. I mean, this guy's written to hot checks all over the states, is banned from entering the states. This guy over here, like, is, is accused of funneling money through the United States and, and and is I think was also booted from the United States. So I mean, Harry knows that he made some mistakes throughout that trip and he's got to acknowledge them if he wants to continue to play fake royal uh, you know internationally I think that's that's probably a pretty good point maybe we don't quite give him enough credit but on to Princess Catherine and she's been seen out and about during her recovery and you know as you well know some of the scandalous rumors which have been circulating in recent months it's probably some smart PR for her occasionally to be seen in the flesh. Do you think that's fair? Well, you know, I, I don't know if... I think you're right. I think it is good PR for her, but I don't think that that's her objective because it's my understanding that she was incredibly hurt by the conspiracy theories. Um, I mean, emotionally hurt and just wanted to hide away. Um, but it is being reported that she has turned a corner when it comes to her health. The family is feeling positive about the direction. She is spending time in the sunshine with her babies and her children are especially grateful for the rare downtime to just enjoy and love on both their mother and father because how often do they just get to come home and mom and dad are both there. Um, so I'm grateful that her health has improved. I'd love to see her at Trooping, but my my people are telling me it looks like more possibly an autumn relaunch for the Princess of Wales. Uh, but oh my goodness, I would be so thrilled if we got to see her at Trooping. Yeah, that would be amazing. And look, we do understand that her, her treatment is progressing, um, but we don't have uh, any sort of return timeline yet, do we? I mean, you've mentioned the autumn, but, you know, that could be any time, right? 
Absolutely. And the palace is insisting that they're not going to give us a date. Um, and what I've also heard is that both Prince William and King Charles have stressed to her, it's all about you. Uh, it, you know, once your doctors clear you, uh, do not feel any pressure to return to work. Come back when you're ready. Um, and, you know, I think I, I'm sure she I'm sure she misses us, too. But we certainly do miss her. She's box office. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But the most important thing, I think, is that, that she gets well. And if she needs the time, she should absolutely take the time. Now, this year, we've really seen, uh, obviously, with both Charles and Catherine, the impact uh, of what can go wrong with a slim-down royal family. Kinsey, a great piece in the UK Telegraph suggesting that William uh, might put more and younger royals up front. Is that the solution both to the actual and, and the perception uh, issues? Well, I'm sure you remember that interview where um, the Princess Royal Anne was like, that's a ridiculous idea, the, the suggestion of a slimmed down monarchy. And the king actually made those comments decades ago. Um, what we see today isn't that execution. It's just a, a tragic hand that they've been dealt. Um, and when we see Prince William engaging with all of his cousins at the Buckingham Palace garden party, I think he's expressing uh, his love for his family and unity. But the queen was very clear that half in, half out doesn't work. And it's part of the reason that Harry and Meghan continue to publicly fall on their faces. I don't really believe that Prince William will attempt to bring any additional family members center stage, but I do think he's going to keep, you know, his cousins close to him. Uh, but I think it's going to stay those core members.